everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. Today we are doing taking a familiar thing, this menu up here, and incorporating it into a full site. And I'm going to be using a new CSS property called position to make the heading be static. So as you scroll, the heading stays there and we can get to our navigation anywhere on the page. So I've taken our navigation that we styled last week these are all the same styles over here and all I've done differently in the document is added some filler text and some images just so we have some content on the page here and before I get into positioning I'm gonna change the colors just a little bit because I want to show you a trick what I have been doing is just using the color names because brackets which is the text editor I use just gives them to me when I'm doing colors and it's convenient but it there's not a long list if you do it that way and um, a way to do do this with a lot more control is just using a color picker so I just go to Google and all you need to do is type in color picker and it'll understand you want an HTML color picker and let's say I want like a dusky pink so it gives you a lot of control here so this is your RGB values which you can put right in your HTML are this exact thing would be instead of putting the name of the color you'd put RGB and this is the value of red the value of green the value of blue in this color and you can also add another value there called a which is your alpha for transparency and then you put a number between 0 and 1 to set the opacity of the color or this is called a hexadecimal here it's a hash and then six symbols that's just a code for the color and I like to use the hexadecimal so I'm gonna co copy this and set my link colors to that. So it's in my nav list item a tag. I'm going to set it to that hexadecimal refresh and now you can see there all this dusky pink and I kind of like the hover. I dig it. It's nice. Alright. I can close that up and we are going to now get to styling this up here to... actually I'm going to start with these images because as you can see they're not all the same size and we've done images before in a past video so all I'm gonna do is select my images give them a width of should we do 40 percent see how that looks save refresh that's better and I do the percent again because when you refresh resize the window then the image resizes with it which is just a good practice to do um, let's give them Let's give them a float too, because I don't like that they're a block like this. I'm going to float everything right. See how that looks. And, and then what I'm going to do to target just the first, I want to like stagger these, right? I want the first and third images to be on the left and this one to be on the right. So I'm just going to do a custom selector here, images, and then my colon. Let's do first of type and image last of type. So that'll target the first image and the last image. We're going to float those left and the cascade comes into play here because this later rule is going to override this one because this is applied to all of the images but here I'm targeting a more specific selector later on in the cascade that will override that. So there we go, our first and third are on the left. And I'm going to give all of these a little bit of a margin too just so it looks a little bit nicer. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Just a little cosmetic update here. Now I'm going to style this. So back in our HTML you can see I made this whole header, this heading and the menu itself in a div which is just a little it's just a way to make a, another element on your page. It just blocks this off and I'm giving it an ID of header because I want to style this chunk of elements. So let's go back up to the top here because here it's not going to matter. Just so you can see a little bit easier. I'm going to target then the ID of header. Um, let me just to set it apart let's give it a background color Hmm. Well, you know what? Why did we why did we close our color picker? Let's pull this up again. I just want it to be like a dark gray. 
I'll copy this over. And you know, I should probably change the text on this H1 to white so it stands out. All right, so I need to set the height of this so it includes this list as well. So let's go back into our header element, set height to 15 viewport height. So this is a new unit here, this viewport unit, and you can set it either viewport height or viewport width. And what that does is it measures based on the width and height of the viewport, meaning you know, how wide your screen is or how big your device is. So if you were on a mobile device with a much smaller viewport that you were viewing it on, it would take 15 units of that viewport height and adjust it so it would fit the screen. Kind of like percents in that it, it measures based on how you're viewing it, not on a already set unit like a pixel. So I'm going to set it, let's just see how 15 looks. That's pretty good. It's a little bit, a little bit big. What does 10 look like? Some trial and error. No, oh, see, now that's too small. Let's do 13. I like it. I like 13. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off. Where did I have my hover? My display hover. Okay, I'm going to just comment this this rule out like this just to take the hover out for now because that's not really the functionality we're working with right here and it was throwing me off there we go okay so let's pretend this is our menu here okay so now I'm gonna go back up to targeting my header actually if I set the width is that gonna fill the hole the whole screen that might look a little bit better nope doesn't change anything <laughs> okay so now here comes our new property of position so in CSS positioning lets you take an element out of the flow of the page kind of like float you know how a float will move the selected element to the side and let the content flow around it the way we did with our navigation menu we had each list item float to the left so they would pop up next to each other and the way we just did with images where we're floating them to the side and letting the text the rest of the elements flow around it so positioning does that kind of but it gives you a little bit more control over where you want to place that element on the page so it and it doesn't associate with the rest of the content the way float will flow everything around it positioning is a lot more a lot more controlled is how I would say it and with positioning you also have another factor called Z index which just lets you overlap or layer things which we're also going to use so the four options we have for the positioning rule you can set it to absolute which takes the element out of the document and position it at a specified offset so we'll use top left right that kind of thing to say I want this element out and I want it you know five pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left and it'll position it exactly where you want it regardless of where anything else on the page is. For fixed it's very similar but it stays there relative to the whole page and I'm gonna use fixed on my menu because I want it to stay fixed at the top of my screen while I'm scrolling. Um, and then relative it moves it relative to the normal position of the document flow but it doesn't affect other things I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this one too so I'll show you all of them because they're a little bit easier to understand in context static is the standard so if for some reason you need to override a previously set position you would use static but you don't typically need to use this unless you are overriding all right so let's get in here and let's use this so for my header again I'm gonna set the position to fixed See this okay maybe this is what I was thinking I need my width to be 100 because I'm taking it out of the flow so I want it to be a hundred percent of the body yep there we go okay I was gonna say I think when I use fixed I want positioning and I do and actually now this gap looks kind of small maybe I do want it to be at let's try 14 I like it okay 14 <laughs> trial and error folks this is what design is all about so position fixed now I'm gonna position this from the top and you can do a negative or a positive value here a positive value moves it 
away from your starting point, so away from the top, or if this was left, it would be away from the left, and a negative moves it toward it. So if I wanted to hide this, for example, I can just do like negative 50 pixels. It's going to move it up so far, I can't even see it, or at least part of it gets cut off. But I don't want it to be negative. Say I set it to positive 50, it's going to be 50 pixels from the top, it's going to be down here. But I actually just want to set it to zero, so it's flush with the top of our page. And as you can see, now it's already overlapping and we've lost the top top of our content div. Because remember, I made a div for header, I have a big div here for content that ends all the way down here. So there's that. Now let's let's actually target that content div. And again, I have an ID of content, so I'm going to target it there. We're going to give this one a position of relative. And we need to move this from the top. Let's move it 14 viewport height, because that is the height of this element. So it should pop it down just below our header. Why did this not work? Oh, it did. Oh, but look, see, because this is later, it's on top of my header. And this is where a Z index comes in. So an in Z index is just what order do you want the positioned elements on your page. And the higher the number, the further to the top of the stack. So I'm just going to give it 5 in case I were to give something 1, 2 down here. 5 is a good, a safe one. And you could go any number. I could do 501 and it would still put them in order that way. But I'm going to save this, I'm going to refresh it, and there we go. Now it is on top of the rest of the content the way I want it. Perfect. Now let's play a little bit more with our other options for positioning. We've done fixed, we've done relative. Let's play a little bit with absolute. I'm going to target my image first of type. So this image right here on the top. Let's give it a position, spelled right, Claire, of absolute. And again, absolute is going to remove it from the flow of the document. I'm going to position it specified where I want it. It's not going to have anything to do with the rest of the document. So let's see, just positioning it absolute, what does it do? See, it's on top now. The regular flow is paragraph, paragraph, heading, paragraph, paragraph. It's on top now. Let's say I want this. 100 pixels from the top and and 100 pixels from the left. Save that. You can see now I've scooted it over here. And I could give it a Z index higher than that of our header and it would be on top then. So let's give it a Z index of just 6. So you can see what I mean. Now when I scroll that one stays on top. But it's not fixed, so it moves with the document the way this fixed element does not. So say now, later on, I want my first image to have a position of static. This should move it back to the way it was. And it does. It overrides it. We don't need either of those. They were just for show. Anyway guys, I think I'm going to cut off here. You can see we've made our fixed header right here using positioning and z-index and all that fun stuff. Thanks so much for tuning in this week, you guys. I hope you have a great week and I will see you all next time.